Yeah, take care. See you, Izzy. Thank you, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the Concierge and Land User Group. Ooh. Meeting. Can Trademark. Fancy with the names. I guess I should kind of start out with um, somewhat big news. Uh, High Fidelity um, Company has made an investment into Second Life, uh, which has included some patents, uh, some employees, uh, and the addition of Second Life's founder, Philip Rosedale, uh, in an advisory role with the lab. Uh, he'll be bringing his experience to us to help shape the future of Second Life. Um, it's pretty big news. I'm pretty happy to hear about it. Uh, there will be a lab gab uh, coming up about this as well. Uh, watch the blog at community.secondlife.com. There will be more details on that there. Um, but yeah, overall, very pleasing. Uh, Phil spoke yesterday as well about some of the, some of his ideas and thoughts. So overall, very nice to see. And, and there are others that are back as well who are with, with High Fidelity who have now joined us or joined back with us. So it's really kind of an exciting time. I know people found out about uh, Leviathan Linden yesterday at the server meeting, so it's good to have him back. Right, exactly, Lucy. Go for it, Adam. Jinx. Nice. <laughs> Well, it's good to hear, Adam. Thanks for sharing with everyone. Appreciate it. I'm going to talk about next uh, regarding the uh, year-end and future projects, The uh, basically the 2021 Second Life Year in Review uh, that was also posted. There's some things that got mentioned in the uh, update as well as a look back at 2021. Um, we did mention some of the other features that are being planned for 2022 in the blog that you can take a look at. Um, some of them uh, that we want to talk about are avatar expressiveness that will bring camera-based gestures and movement to your avatar for a whole new level of interaction and connectedness. That will be awesome. Um, Premium Plus got mentioned. New account upgrade option with additional features and extras. Told you, Adam, when we'd have news, we'd share it. Uh, going through us, the rest of them, a uh, new mobile viewer to enhance and improve your Second Life experience. Also for In Adam there. Yep. Top two. It's like we knew, we all knew, literally we, we all knew Adam was waiting for those two. And those were the top two mentioned. Improve group chat reliability, which will be really nice. I know we've done some improvements already for that and they'll continue. Viewer and script performance improvements. Uh, we'll touch on that later in the meeting today, uh, some, yep, some of which has already come out. Uh, new user avatar customization and improvements. Updated mesh optimizer. Search engine improvements beyond the recent visual upgrade uh, that you've guys seen in the uh, search engine. Improved materials and terrain, along with additional web marketplace variants. So um, as you go through it, a lot of this will not have Firm ETAs, this is planned, uh, stuff in process, stuff in preparation. Um, but this is kind of, uh, as we've done before, a roadmap of what we'd like to put out. Um, 
and you know things do change through the year, but these are the projects that we are definitely eyeing for this year. Some of them have already gone uh, into implementation, as I uh, mentioned. So uh, January, we've already gotten the ball rolling. Welcome, Jack. I'm really very excited about some of those upcoming projects. Some of them I've seen a little bit on. Uh, nothing I can really share, unfortunately. It's all very early, but uh, they're going to be really, really exciting to have. Some of them I'll even be using here. Um, yeah, a major. Uh, oh, sorry, a major uh, yeah. accomplishment I think for us was the migration to the cloud. That's was oh, mentioned yeah. in the year-end review. Uh, that was a massive undertaking, basically through the whole company, and uh, we're very happy to have that completed. And it's allowed us to, you know, release a number of uh, performance improvements. So, um, you know, we're excited to not only you know have fit everything on the uh, cloud service, but also and, and just improve, uh, you know. Uh, your day-to-day -day experience in Second Life. Oh, hello, is this thing on? Yes, it is, Tork. Tork. I didn't even have to look to see who that was. <laughs> right? I'm like, hey, Torque. <laughs> Hi, chaps. Is, is there any gossip on uh, the word on the grapevine, of course, is that Vivox and uh, Spatial will be, in, will be changed around as the voice thing. Now, a lot of speculation. When are you guys going to break cover on that? We haven't heard anything, um, and is, if anything does roll out, uh, it's going to be on the featured news page, uh, you know, as we always mention, Torque. Um, we really don't like speculating any rumors if there are any, uh, but we're, we're not aware of anything that I'm, I've heard of as far as any change to that. Yeah, I'll echo that. I mean, I know there are rumors out there. Um, uh, the best way I can put it is that we have heard nothing on, on any changes on that right now. Uh, we're still definitely with 5X at this point. Will that change in the future? It might, but we really don't know. We really don't have any information on that. We've not I can heard even any go one slight step further in that, Torek. I can pretty much assume uh, what your implication uh, and suggestion is in that. And even people hinting in that regard, I've heard nothing uh, that would actually substantiate it. Oh, well, that's fair enough, isn't it? But... Um... If it was to happen and it was moved in house, that could be beneficial to everybody, couldn't it? Because voice hijackers and all that sort of stuff, it wouldn't be third party software anymore. Yeah, I suspect it could it, be. Purely I know speculating. It's interesting to see. Um, I've looked at uh, what High Fidelity has done with that before, and it's pretty impressive. So it'd be nice. Yeah, Agreed. I'm, I'm not against of... the possibility. It's just as far as I know, there aren't even talks about it yet. Right. Yeah, basically, right. as you said, I am a fan of spatial audio. I I enjoy that that sound feature in, in headphones. Um, so uh, I mean, I, I've heard of High Fidelity before. They're an exciting company, and uh, we were totally jazzed um, when they were partnering with us. But uh, as far as any changeover to our current service, yeah, I would say um, nothing until you see anything official toward. That's fair enough. It would it would pr probably require all kinds of viewer modifications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's a very nice sounding system, isn't it? I've been playing the demo on that on the high, high fidelity when it came out, and it does give like a real proper third dimensional sound. Absolutely, but Torque, it's like you're implying that Vivox and sound is so internal and critical to so how Second Life runs. Um. Well, if you took it further from um, the responsibility of governance, you know, if, if it was in-house, that would come under their, be their purview, wouldn't it, their remit? Absolutely, and a lot and easier to block, right? Absolutely, yeah. Jack, maybe some new people uh, that didn't know, you know, when things were mentioned uh, recently, but that'd be about it.
Whitney, that one might, or Wendy, that might be one for you because I'm not, I haven't heard anything about multi-core support. Yeah, I was just thinking about myself. I've not heard any details on anything related to multi-core support. Uh, that might actually be something to uh, take up to the server user group. They may have a, a better handle True. on that. Yeah, in case it was mentioned on the forums, we'd like to see, and then we can kind of share it on if anybody from like the dev team had mentioned anything then we'll be kind of made aware as well. <laughs> but I haven't heard Okay, anything. cool, Michelle. Yeah, Vix, we need to have okay. uh, on the agenda page a rumors we have heard page with links uh, so we can confirm and deny. <laughs> My res day isn't until next month when I turn 15. 15, good grief. <laughs> I'll hit 10 until August. Nicely done, Izzy. I will alert the fire department, Izzy, for your cake. <laughs> no, that's my re uh, first life birthday. Correct, Jack. I think my third comes up in March. I'm newbie here, but uh, my resident one is is a little bit older than Izzy. So, Wendy, I think your resident one is older than my resident one. That I don't know, but who knows? So I did want to jump in. Um, the uh, we have a couple of. Uh, research questionnaires and so forth I wanted to touch on. Uh, we do have a research questionnaire that's going to be coming out from research at secondlife.com, uh, asking for some of your opinions on Second Life. Um, that is a legitimate email. Um, always, you know, just want to add in there that we never ask for things like your Second Life password or anything like that in an email. That would be silly. But uh, if it's coming from research at secondlife.com about your opinions about Second Life, that is legitimate. Uh, we even had another one recently. There was a little smaller group that uh, went out. Um, also, uh, if you do use, uh, oof, probably. Um, also, if you're a user of Flickr, uh, they have a uh, feedback request they sent out to a number of Second Life users. Um, you might get that from them if you happen to use Flickr for your SL. Um, just a couple of things that are going around first of the year, people trying to figure things out. So that should be fun. I didn't mean it to be Jack, but it's one of those things where that would be very odd to see that in a survey. And Karen, I really don't think they have a leg to stand on with that. Nico, yeah, it was a reference to um, uh, the Meta Horizons avatars, which are, which have no lower half to the body. Yeah, Patrick, we don't know yet. Um, that's still being worked out as far as what the specifics are on on Premium Plus. 
Yeah, I can I can echo that, uh, Patrick. We were actually moving ahead, and then of course other things uh, got in the way. So we're not even at the bringing uh, it um, back in a realistic plan just yet. So we don't have any information yet. I will sound a bit like a broken record um, or a skipping CD or a bad MP3 file and say that, uh, yeah, check, keep up, keep watching the blog. Uh, there will be more information there when it comes out. Hey, Wendy, I'll start recording now. You can go ahead and say it and then we'll just play that back every time. Too late. <laughs> Oh, go ahead, Tork. Hey, uh, sorry, I was going to say, did you mention the Tilly story today? The which story? You the, know, um, I don't the... think we have. I don't think we have. Because there was uh, a mail shot uh, earlier. An hour or two ago? Uh, I just wanted to say that it's Second Life is the best advert for the Tilly system, isn't it? So it's a win win. Yeah, I agree. For those who might be wondering what Torek was was mentioning there, I'll just touch on it briefly. Um, Tilio, which is uh, our payment system, uh, it's owned by Linden Lab, which is also the head of Second Life, um, is partnering with Unity. Uh, they'll be helping with uh, virtual economies for developers who are using Unity. Unity. So that's a, it's a pretty big deal. We're pretty pleased about that news. Is that all about? How come all of a sudden, we always used to say you had to be within three minutes of Georgia or whatever, um, how come you're employing in other countries? When did that happen? Well, that's actually um, way back in the day, we were all over the world. Uh, then for financial reasons, uh, because of course, with all of the different things you have to have as far as disability and taxes and all that kind of stuff, uh, it was switched. Uh, and now I believe it's more on a case-by-case -case basis. No, well, that would be amazing if it, if it was open 24 hours a day, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if Second Life had someone on hand 24 hours a day in his virtual world? Some of our departments actually do have people on hand for at least most of the hours of the day. Um, unfortunately, yeah. support doesn't at this point, uh, at least some parts of support. The other thing to keep in mind, Torek, is back when like concierge had 24-7 support, things were a lot more expensive in Second Life, so it's kind of a give and take, too. Well, it is. It, it depends which way you want to head, doesn't it? If you're looking for, for growth, it seems to be going through a renaissance, doesn't it? If you're, so if you're looking for growth, you want to make it scalable. Oh, very true, and I'm not arguing that at all. It's just, do we want the funding to come from more people or the current people paying more would be uh, the thought process. Because I'm sure you remember back when an island uh, purchase was almost $2,000 uh, initially. Unfortunately, yeah. And it was, there was some ridiculous setup fee, which was like, you know, you're buying something from us and we want 100 on top to turn it on or something stupid like that.
definitely gone in the right direction. And like I say, the, the press has been very, very complimentary haven't they? Ever, ever since um, the Facebook thing came out. And their metaverse. I wanted to uh, move on a little bit and talk about the uh, simulator updates that uh, we have been uh, releasing here. And uh, go ahead, and if you have any further questions, go ahead and put them into the uh, local chat, and uh, Wendy and Izzy will definitely be answering. Um, but touching on the script performance uh, a little bit, uh, as mentioned earlier, um, it is part of a retooling project that has been in the works for a couple months. Um, simply put, this involved a change in hardware configurations and some changes to the simulator code in order to take better advantage of the cloud servers. So we moved to the cloud service and we're now able to uh, also release some product enhancements, which is definitely good news. Uh, as a result, you should see better script times on your reading or your regions, excuse me, leading to better overall performance. Um, but we also want to caution that with improved performance, you may also see some throttling on the IHTTP request calls and that will sell in cases where uh, region is being pushed especially hard as a result of the script improvements. Um, there's also been some changes with some of the depreciation of some old cold and obsolete protocols within regions. And uh, for more information, let me go ahead and get you the link here where it talks about it a little bit more. So simply put, if your script time and your region um, was at a certain number, let's say, uh, 12 milliseconds and it dropped to 5 and you have the same number of scripts running, um, that is a good thing. <laughs> and your scripts run increased and is nearing you know, a higher percentage like 85, 90, 100%, that is also a good thing. Yes, we've seen a couple reports where uh, residents were surprised that the script time went down. They thought that was bad. Like, no, the total script time on your region, if it is dropping, that means it's good because then you should see your spare time increasing, which means the region now has more flexibility to do more. In a nutshell. Adam, uh, no ETA. <laughs> Sorry. It's on the roadmap. Um, if you go in the link, I can go ahead and repost it. Um, I, I did uh, preface that although with our, our planned improvements for 2022, uh, we do not have specific ETAs for those that you do not see you know, currently being released. But um, as they are released, you know, we'll definitely be the ones you know, here to you know, share the good news, let you know that you know, this uh, product is finally out. And here's your chance to record it, Izzy. You'll probably see those in, that information when it's available on our blog at community.secondlife.com. Hey, Sen, I'll go ahead and answer your question. Um, with any updates, um, you'll usually see a new viewer version. Uh, so the download link will be the same. Um, you'll see the release notes. And on the release notes, you'll see the improvements, uh, new features, and also uh, a list of any bugs that were fixed and are also part of that release. So the release versions is what you want to ultimately pay attention to uh, when the new enhancements come out. And let me go ahead and get you the download link.
and for anyone who just opened that with me, if you go ahead and click on Release Notes, uh, right under the big orange uh, executable link, uh, it will take you to another page where you'll see a number of other uh, viewer versions that are um, in a testing phase, such as like a maintenance viewer, uh, something that you know the developers are still working on. Um, you can, you are welcome to download those and uh, give them a whirl and see what you think. And with every link, you're going to see its own set of uh, release notes here. Not a lot as I'm going through them. The maintenance um, viewer has quite a few. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you an example here. This one is very brand new, and um, you know we're eager to hear any feedback. If any of you are using it, um, please let us know. You know what you think if you are experiencing any issues, or you know overall how it how it looks. Let us know. For what it's worth, as far as you know, increases to land impact or other specific server or graphic related stuff. Um, a lot of those are really going to be better handled at the server meeting. Uh, we primarily here are dealing with kind of concierge and land issues, uh, though we can touch on them as we have somewhat uh, generally. We don't we don't have the roadmap on those, um, but they would have a closer look at it. And uh, the 22 year end blog post also has at least the the plans and expectations for this year. So um, it is Jack, but we don't have anything on that as far as server changes and how that's going to affect uh, Land LI at this time. It might in the future, but I really don't we, know. We typically get how to handle issues uh, in the, the Land's current situation, not what's coming down the pipe, unless it's something that's going to be happening in the very short term, uh, in which case it would be on the blog, and that's something that we can then talk about. Uh, unfortunately, the concierge and the Land group deal primarily with the current status of the grid and the rules, et cetera, and how to right. you know, yeah. work through that rather than the roadmap. We like to stay in the here and now of things. send unfortunately i personally don't have any information on that um, i'm not even sure of the status of the third party viewer meetings uh because i've ever since i went to land i haven't really been a part of those anymore so unfortunately i don't really have an answer for you there might be worth rattling uh the third party viewers that you like best you might be just rattling their cages on them Yeah, you could definitely go to the Firestorm people and put it in a, a bug report saying, you know, when are you going to update this, 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 and this? Tell them Izzy sent you. And that it was Wendy's fault. Yeah, I, yeah, I did that when the bug came out um and it, it it's on their it's on their jira and i posted it both to the jira of the second life viewer and also to the firestorm one and the and the second life team did went real fast and corrected it almost immediately um it was a it was a pretty major bug that came out uh as soon as firestorm had released their, their yeah, yeah. sorry do we know if anything's happening for valentine's i'm sure it will be but are you guys doing something Oh, we have news. Yeah, we'll share it uh, in a little bit here, Tor. It's on the agenda. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I, I think two people bounced over each other there for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. 
No, no, I don't think that was really uh, you interrupting there. Uh, as far as the information um, going on, uh, as far as third party viewers, unfortunately, um, in this particular instance, that's a great win for Linden Lab to have uh, been um, ahead of the game. But sometimes it's a, a this third party viewer or that third party viewer that gets the fix done before we even do. So just happened to be an example of where we did. I want to bounce in here for a second just to add um, uh, something that actually we, we discussed briefly uh, last month, uh, which uh, was some of the changes to offlines to email, uh, just to make it easier to determine what you get in an offline message. Um, you can set your options to avoid group notices should you wish. Um, that's at least currently. We may add more of that in the future. Um, all you have to do for that is go to that link. Uh, check the box to continue to receive group notices. Um, otherwise, by default, it's off. You don't have to worry about those going in. Helps to prevent issues with capping and so forth. Um, I should note also we've uh, received a handful of reports from people uh, who did adjust their settings um, but stopped receiving any notifications. Um, if you see that, go back to that link that I just posted. Uh, just double check your settings, make sure everything is checked the way you want it. And Kanoko, I, I, I have no idea. Um, I don't write software, thankfully, so I don't have to do that. Lucy, that may be an issue with you viewing uh, past the region border, maybe. Yes, I was trying to determine if they were avatars or not. And then I turned my camera. Hey, Send. Um, for that one, um, if you have any information on uh, the crasher example time uh, region name, uh, go ahead and drop it into an abuse report, and um, our governance team uh, will be notified and they can look into it. If you don't have a name, you can use Governor Linden as the subject name.
So moving on to our last piece of news, uh, in February we have the Shop and Hop event coming up. I think that's what you're asking about, Torque. Valentine's Day is coming up soon, and um, as always, we're going to do something big for Valentine's Day. We love the event here. It's always a pleasure to hang out with the residents. Uh, the event will open on Wednesday, February 2nd, and will run through Tuesday, February 15th. Plenty of time to stop by and have some fun. And we'll be offering discounted items and free gifts from scores of SL designers. So as always, don't be surprised if you see the the famous Hug a Linden Dunk a Linden event, as well as some of Valentine's theme last names getting added to the username options. But we don't have the official names out yet, uh, but don't be surprised if you see a return of a couple. And speaking of last names, as always, if you have any suggestions on a name that uh, we can consider to put out, use this form right here. And we'll definitely take a look. And the date again, once again, is Wednesday, February 2nd, running through Tuesday, February 15th. And you'll definitely see more news come out as we get closer. And for that, we'll just go ahead and open it up for questions. This is the uh, land meeting, so if you have anything uh, regards land parcels, region uh, maintenance or management, um, you know, let it fly. Either text or uh, if you have chat going, uh, you know, open the mic. Mainland Estates, Linden Homes. See, no land questions, Wendy. They're all now going to ask tons and tons and tons of uh, private island questions. Awesome. Send, that's definitely something that we've tackled from time to time, and I know it's something that I have sent up. Um, I don't know that there's a JIRA on it that's active at the moment, so it may be time to put that in as a feature request again, but I know every time I get asked, it's one of the things that I throw on there. Oh, that's really clever, Send. Yeah, it it works really well, but um, you know, it's a it's a temporary solution because eventually you do hit the three hundred limit, you know. Yeah, I, just so you know, send. Um, not only have I asked for that list to be expanded, but I've also asked for that list to update based on account status, so that way ones that haven't been, you know, or that are in a closed status for over a period of yeah. time drop off. Yeah, yeah, like, because, you know, th there will be um, somebody will get permabanned or something, right? But the name right. is still on the list, and then it's up to us to go through and, like, search through. We have to go through all the names manually. And, and I you have don't to, like, know if it's a temporary yeah. ban or if it's a permanent one. So you could let somebody right. off that list, and then all of a sudden they're back a week later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Definitely stuff. I want a much more interactive ban and allow list capabilities. Um, but Obviously, that's not low-hanging fruit, but not high-hanging fruit just yet. But it's definitely, um, you know, we're constantly butting up against, uh, you know, because I use the estate ban and the parcel ban list. And actually, I don't use the uh, parcel ban. I use the parcel allow list. Um, and I'm constantly hitting the limit. That's why I had to create the um, the infinite um allow list but it's not really infinite because eventually i will hit it right um, one thing to keep aware of though if you're using the estate and the parcel level um if you start having people say that they can't get there and they're not on any lists uh it could be the 
quote unquote airlock bug, um, which is my word for it, um, uh, early when we started on. Sometimes if somebody's on a slower connection, um, the system has to check the region access list and then it has to check the um, parcel access list. Uh, so if there's stuff populated on both, it's like they couldn't get through both doors of the airlock in time and so they time out and get a failed uh, access. So just keep uh, that in mind if you start getting complaints of people that can't uh, actually get access but aren't actually blocked. So maybe there needs to be, yeah, I need to put like a delay in my script or something like that. Quite possible, but I'm sure you can play around with it and see the timing. Yeah, so far it's been working really good. Right, and don't worry about it uh, if you're not having issues and complaints like that. And the first step, if you do get issues like that, restart the region because it could just be, you know, oh, shoot, this region's been up for two weeks, so it's uh, moving a little uh, more slowly. But after a restart, if you're getting consistent complaints, then that's when I would tweak it. Yeah, the, the problem with the reason I don't do the uh, payment, I used to do the payment information restriction thing um, last year, but um, there's a lot of people that don't have it. And so how, using the allowed list is really a, kind of a better way of doing it. And Patrick, um, I'm actually pushing more on the access lists uh, because it's more of an obvious use, but once we have the cleanup ability on the access lists. It will be a lot easier to then port it over to groups. So you can see my master evil plan there. Oh yeah. He, Patrick's got a good point about the, um, like sometimes the roles in a group will show that there's more people in the role than there really is because the person's account is gone. Right. Um, and it sort of leaves behind a stale number. And that's when you get people in the group that are going, who's being hidden? How come I can't be hidden? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um I'm compressing the UID down to about seven characters. Michelle, sorry, I had to scroll up because so much happened at once. I don't know of any uh, uh, intention to put them in the content packs as of yet, but I will definitely mention that because you're right. Since they are used in Bellis area, it would help people uh, to be able to go ahead and keep with the same theme and stuff like that. So I'll pass that along. I would absolutely love to mow grass on my linden home. <laughs> Aaron, really the like. problem is, yeah, but, and Vic, same thing, though. Uh, if if that was an option, we'd have people that would leave their lawnmower out. We'd have people that don't True. mow their lawn enough. And I deal with enough HOA uh, garbage in real life. I don't want to have to <laughs> monitor it and uh, everything in Second Life. I'll leave that to governance. Really? You don't want Second Life to become real world simulator? <laughs> Isn't it? I completely agree with that, Michelle. That's actually back when I was on concierge. One of the biggest things that I would say, you know, is there a particular reason why you used 40 different trees uh, that are only slightly different than one another, given how much more time it will take to res all that in? If we're going to put grass, we might as well just go ahead and put poles, too. <laughs> Vix, you can tell by that comment that you play The Sims. <laughs> Me 
leave you a little. <laughs> Arabella, then I'll have to make scion wolves to go after the sheep, and it'll be a whole thing. No, Wendy, you cannot mother load your way into extra Linden dollars. Curses. Oh, yeah, Lucy, I'll just call that a feature. You see, part of your HOA fee uh, automatically is having your uh, grass serviced by the HOA. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I just thought of something. Uh, it would be kind of cool if we could have a list of groups that are allowed on a parcel. Right now, it's kind of like a, um, you, you can only have one, right? Um, it'd be neat if you could say, if they're in this group, this group, or this group, then all of those options then apply to um, their permission on the land. Because, for example, um, if I add people to the main group and the main group uh, has the ability to res, uh, sometimes you don't want those people to be able to res. Right now, I bypass that by using a loud list, but it'd be kind of cool if we had a group for resing and a group that just gives you extra access to the land. Absolutely, and that's definitely it something. Give you res. As Vix and Wendy mentioned, definitely Jira that as a feature request because having multiple groups have v various uh, abilities and whatnot would definitely be something uh, to do as a feature request. Yeah. You don't have to give race to everybody in the race group. You know that, don't you? No. Yeah, you don't have to, but I do like to give it. So it, it would be nice to be able to have like two groups on a LAN, and then one is for resing, one's just for the access. They both give the access to the LAN, but one gives the res and the other one doesn't. But Torx, right, you Torx. could just have one group have the access, and then one role within the group have the resing ability. Yeah. And But you don't, mm -hmm. one misconception that people have is they think that check marking the group option then defaults to the group role abilities, whereas those check marks in options actually mean everybody in the group can. Having neither one checked means that uh, people with roles in that group can. For, for the turn it off in the land though, you've got it in the about land, you've got to turn off the box that says um, allow raising for everyone in the group, so you turn that off, and then in your everyone, you don't have risibility, and then in your second profile, that's where you give, in the second role profile, that's where you give risibility. Exactly. Hey, Karen, I wanted to uh, touch on uh, the JIRA and suggestion aspect. We do mention it before. In fact, I think I, I used a previous uh, uh, suggestion, and it did receive a uh, developer reply. Um, anyone who is, is, you know, like a musician for uh, in your case, um, that they don't have enough slots, it would be really good if we had this. And you hear that feedback. Um, I would definitely open up the JIRA using the link above. Um, just send in whatever you know, what, uh, whatever the musicians are asking for, because we do have a review team. They look at this. Now we can't guarantee, uh, you know, anything gets implemented, obviously, uh, but it does give a proper review. And uh, you know, part of our job here as well is to gather feedback and send it up if we can, you know, um, where appropriate. So yeah, definitely uh, let us know what musicians are saying. You know, we want to know what everyone is uh, looking for. Uh, if we can all channel that into the uh, the proper bucket for review, you know that would uh, make everyone happy. So we know, you know, what's going on. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, absolutely. I love the live music venues. I, I try to visit them whenever I can. They're great. There's been some really special performances just in the past couple of years. Yeah, I keep working up the courage to actually uh, join a live music venue, but I haven't gotten the guts yet. Ah. 
Adam is expecting some music, is he? Baby Metal Fan Group. Oh, I'm going to have to look this up. I, I may or may not be a huge metalhead. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, Karen, that's why I definitely start on my alt before going in Ezra Linden. Oh no, Izzy, now they'll be expecting every new user to is a possible Linden. Could that be Izzy? Wow. Yeah, watch some poor guy accidentally have a kitty cat on his shoulder and everybody be like, ah, oh, we know. Reminds me of the day when we used to have a very popular high-end uh, club on one of the uh, regions um, that w always had their estate managers yell at anybody that wasn't in proper attire. And I went in there bef uh, before uh, eh, before mesh, but it wasn't in a suit or whatever. And I got yelled at by a um, estate manager that they were going to ban me. I was like, oh, yeah, try. Go ahead. And then the owner was like, um, what are you doing? We have about eight minutes left. This has been an amazing meeting. Thank you, everyone, for participating, for bringing in your questions. Um, we definitely love the engagement. You're here. I love that idea, Patrick. And even if we can't do it as an export to CSV, having a better breakdown rather than just a list by owner might be cool. Hey, Ileana. Um, Everything that we have discussed, and we make a point of this, is available on the featured news blog in some fashion. Um, so what we talk about is uh, readily available for everyone to review. And if you missed any part of it, don't worry. I am Vix day or night, and he'll go over what you missed. And if you need the spelling of my name, it is I-Z-Z-Y dot L-I-N. <laughs> what a very, very good meeting. Thank you very much. Likewise, everybody. Thank you. Absolutely. And if you have any last questions um, or bear requests or anything, yeah, hit us up. Yeah, especially now that we have the land bear uh, bear. The land bear bear. Yeah, that's it. So can I ask a question to you guys, um, with all your, you know, all the recent changes, what's the vibe like where you are? Is it is it very positive like it is in world? I will I say, say for is. myself, yeah. I'm very um, charged up and really uh, enjoying the direction. Same here, absolutely. Very yeah, much I agree. so.
Uh, and that is not Izzy Stepford here. Izzy saying that. That's actually me saying it. Yeah, totally. I mean, even, you know, thinking back in my resident days, it's one of the bigger pushes right now, one of the better times. From, the, from a resident point of view, who pays for regions and has commercial space and that sort of thing, um, it, it does. It, it, feel, it's, it feels like it's really, really growing really quickly. Uh, it feels like bloody hard work, actually, but... It's it is this it's got momentum. Yeah, a lot of huge positive news that have come through that's really just supercharged us. Uh, you know, uh, Philip is back. Um, High Fidelity is partnered with us. Tilly has partnered with Unity. Um, you know, these are just those are big updates. But we've also made you know a series of improvements as well uh, with script performance, uh, with the move to the cloud. Um, so yeah, we we are all supercharged and. Yeah, uh, we come into work engaged and just ready to go. And more on the pipeline. And more to come. <laughs> yes, that's actually what I'm even more happy about, not just uh, the way things are. Because when there's big changes, of course, everybody gets a little, what's going to happen? That's all been good as far as I'm concerned. And the roadmap and the way things are presented and discussed and everything it makes me very, very right. happy. I love reading those articles, Karen, where it says, oh, yeah, Facebook has a meta, but Second Life has been doing it better. <laughs> I bookmarked those. And, you know, hey, we've got legs. And it's only just beginning, Karen. It's also nice to be the um, original that everybody compares to, you know. Oh, you, you, you can do that in Second Life. Oh, well, in Second Life, I can do this. So it's just kind of nice. All right, I need to run, so you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Thank you, everyone. We'll Can see you, you next month. Last thing uh, I want to say, Karen, after what you just said there, we'll just have a big uh, thing that says, you know, Meta banned by Nike because, you know, shoes comes on legs. <laughs> Take care, all. Have a wonderful, wonderful second life. Take care, everyone. Who's taking me down the pub then? <laughs>